The UK has a history with its empire of importing its timber and not making good use of its own and neglecting the management and the and the just general husbandry of its own woodland, especially deciduous woodland resources. My name's Jim Burley. Um, the company is Scottish Wood and we are in Fife, West Fife, Central Scotland. We are a social enterprise in Fife, Scotland. It's a Scottish charity. A charity owns the sawmill and the sawmill covenants its properties to the charity. People now realise that to buy a piece of hardwood, a piece of wood, uh, actually contributes to woodlands. It doesn't diminish, it doesn't mean a tree is cutting down, it means a tree is being used and that gap is being refilled with more trees. So it's very much a good environmental story and a good story for using local and not importing from the tropics to unsustainable areas where things are getting cut down when they shouldn't be. We have to know a lot about the individual properties of different hardwoods, who is going to want what, what the markets are. And then we have this alternative bread of bread and butter, which is a great gap filler of larch. Probably 50% of what we cut is for the immediate market. So that's oak frame beams, uh, external uses, all, a whole range of external uses for oak, using green oak, fresh sawn oak. And then the other 50% is kiln dried. And we simply kiln it and supply it uh, to craftsmen and to makers as kiln dried boards. And then a proportion of that we take on to a finished product like flooring or facing. We started, I guess, 20 years ago. Well, actually, initially we started without a saw at all. And we called ourselves a sawmill with only a kiln and a chainsaw. We've had a two or three forties and now we've had two or three seventies. We like to operate with two saws. And it meant you had a standby saw. It meant that if you got really busy, you could have two saws going at the same time. It meant that you had an older saw for other people to learn on and train on and not take over the primary saw for that role. So it filled a number of roles and it was definitely an, a, a good thing to have. But once you get to know a saw, and once you get to see what the competition is, there was no clear re reason for me ever to want to try an alternative product. Woodmiser fitted the bill for us. The saw helps with the recovery, uh, because you're up close to the log, you're seeing what the log can produce, and you're cutting it in order to get the best from it. Uh, but also our system of grading and utilisation and what these, what markets, the offcuts and the bits and pieces can fill, helps our recovery, yeah. Well our latest purchase was an LT70 remote line and that is geared towards production. So that is cutting our stock sizes. Um, that consists of a log deck, a saw, a conveyor and a transfer table. That, uh, oper that's our production unit. Then we have a second saw, another LT70, which is more for our cutting lists. We have a machinery shed with two four cutters and various planers and cross cuts. We actually have two edges. One edger is set up with the uh, remote line um, on the stock sizes. And the second edger is for all our orders that require dimensioning before they get further machining. So we use that a lot, that's a very useful piece of kit. And uh, it's a new one and much more accurate, much quicker to change sizes. So very good if, for example, you have an order for uh, oak facings, you can put the blanks, you get good accurate blanks out of it, just nice and ready to go through the cutters. It's a small industry in Scotland, especially the hardwood industry. Uh, wood is a lovely material to work with. The people that want to buy your wood tend to be nice people. 